I'm Steve Dufresne with The Comfort Company. I have a really, really interesting product that I want to show you. This is the Vicare Cushion. We've carried this for a number of years now, and we found this product over in Europe and thought it to be such a neat, unique item that it's going to change your life and how you do positioning on a day-to-day -day basis that we had to have it. So after carrying it for a number of years, it's become one of our best sellers. What's unique about this cushion is how it works. I'm going to grab one of these two. We have two different types. We have the adjuster, which has five compartments. This being the front, this being the rear. And we have the vector, which has seven compartments. And this being the front, this being the rear. What's unique about this is what's inside of it. It's an air cushion. You guys might have used air cushions in your um, careers, but what's unique about this one is how you use it, how you set it up, and how it's going to work for you after you set it up and the patient leads your care. So let's start with this one, the Vector. This is an E26, 24, and 25 coat. It comes in a variety of sizes from 10 inches by 10 inches all the way up to 24 by 20. And the amazing part about this cushion is that its weight capacity is 550 pounds no matter what the size is. The adjuster cushion is an E26, 22, and 23. It starts at size 14, 14, and also goes up to 24 by 20 with the weight capacity of 550 pounds. And what's different between these two, other than the code, is really the construction of the compartments. You'll notice that there is a very significant difference between the two. And we'll get into that in a little while of what the differences are, how you use them, when you use them, and how to adjust them accordingly. So we'll start with um, the insides. I'm going to sit down here. Come on closer. We're going to open this cushion up. And inside of it, you're going to see these little blue air cells. These are actually tetrahedrons. There's geometry for you. Why this shape? Why not make them out of little round bubbles? Because a tetrahedron is the best geometric shape to stack against the next and still have shearing capabilities. So they're going to fill all the voids versus if we use round bubbles and you had them together, you have the negative area. These, no matter how you put them or squeeze them, they always touch and fill every hole in. So, if you imagine all these tetrahedrons, or as we call them, comfort cells, in these compartments, and these compartments are separate from one another, so they open up the whole back side of this cushion, and you take a look in here, you can see this divider right here and here. This divider is the same seam that goes here, and it keeps them separate from one another. So, the air cells that I put here cannot migrate over to this compartment or this compartment. And that function works the same on both of these cushions. Now, if you take a look at these, they're loose, they're soft, they're extremely light. This is the lightest cushion you're going to find on the market. Um, and what we can do with this is take those air cells from compartment to compartment and either take away or build up each one of these areas allowing you to position the patient accordingly. If you wanted the patient to submerse more into this cushion, you could take air cells out and they will sink in. If you wanted to build up a particular area and possibly offload the center section, offloading their coccyx bone and their ITs, you can put more air cells out here, less in here, and pick them up by their greater trochanter and their leg bone. Thus, offloading the ITs, making this a much more comfortable cushion. This cushion is phenomenal at doing a bunch of things, but one of its best features is how it can help heal the patient. By taking the air cells out and offloading the areas, or in the case of the adjuster cushion, if we look at the two back compartments, if I took air cells out of the right compartment and added a few to the left, the cushion would start taking on this shape. I can now accommodate for an obliquity with a patient, whether it be left or right, or I can build up the center section and make an anti-thrust shelf. If I had a foot propeller, 
I can take air sills out of the leg that they propel with, whether it be their right leg. If you need to drop that leg down so they make better contact, I can take air sills out of this compartment, lowering their leg, bringing it down, making for a better strike. Or um, you can, with the vector cushion, do the same thing through these front compartments, or if you wanted to build up the pommel area, or subtract from it. So basically you guys are kind of getting the pattern of things, which is the sky's the limit with what you want to do. You can do anything you want with this. There is no written rule book of what you can and can't do other than don't take all the air cells out of it, otherwise it won't work. But um, it's kind of like being able to put your signature on any cushion that you give out. Most cushions that come are foam with gel inserts or visco memory foam inserts, and those cushions themselves are off-the-shelf solutions that you can then stick foam wedges underneath, build up, cut away from to um, customize in the field for the patient. Whereas this one, man, the sky is the absolute limit. Just dream how you want to handle the patient's positioning needs, and you can accommodate it with one or the other of these. And I'm going to bring Andy in here in a minute, and I've got a pressure mapper in here, you guys. I'm going to show you how to set it up without the mapping unit because you don't need to have a pressure mapper to do this. It's really, really easy, and I've, I've got a, a very straightforward, simple process that you might have heard of in your life that will help you really get a good fitting for the patient without worrying about having one of these mapping units. But after I get it set up without using the mapper, I'm going to put it underneath Andy and I'm going to show you guys how good we did with it. Okay, I'm going to put them on the ground and show you using my hands uh, different weights being pushed into the cushion. These two cushions are brand new, out of the box, haven't done anything to them. All I did was take the cover off. Um, and if you come down here with me, I'm going to put, take my hands as a replication of the rear end. When I push down on here, you'll see that these compartments are equal. The air cells compress, and I can't go forwards. So if your ITs are back in this area, you can't move forward. So when we're talking about stability and positioning, and you've got patients who slide out of their seat, this is going to hold them there like super glue. <clears throat> so if we push down here, I want to get equal pressure distribution from the left and the right side and from the back to the front. And how we do that, as we said earlier, is by migrating the air cells to either left or right, front or back by using the zippers with the cover off with the patient sitting in the cushion. On the cushion. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'll start by putting our stock adjuster cushion down. And I'm going to have Andy come over here and sit on this for us, all right? Um, without having a pressure wrapper on this, you're going to want to know, okay, how do I know if I have it set up correctly for the patient? And the best way to put it is when you're sitting on air, it's constant. Um, think of a car. Take your car. You've got four tires. You have 40 pounds of pressure in each of the tires. If you were to stack another car on top of your car and then another one on top of that, you'd still have 40 pounds of pressure in each of those tires. It doesn't increase. So pressure is constant when a force is applied to it. So all you're sitting on is a multitude of little air cells with a constant pressure being exerted. What you want to do for the patient is make sure that the patient is making enough contact as possible with the cushion, or I should say equal contact from left or right ITs to the back to the front. So if Andy had um, leg rest hangers that were set too high for him, put your feet up on this. So his legs are at an incline right now. We know by me sticking my hand under here that Andy is not making contact with the cushion. You guys, I don't have to put the pressure map around here for you to know that this would not make for a good reading because he's making no contact here and he's making all the contact back here. But instead of just sliding my hand underneath going, oh, how much weight is this patient putting down? There's another way of doing it. And the cushion kind of gives the secret away. In that, if we go back to that idea of four tires on your car, if you had, say, the um, front right tire that was extremely low, visibly low, 
if you guys walked up to the right side of the car and you kicked the rear tire, which had good pressure in it, it would have a nice solid thud to it. If you kicked the front right one, it's going to have a much different sound and a much different feel. That's where they came with the old phrase of kicking the tires. Um, if you need to fill that tire up, you'd put pressure in it, you'd start filling it up till it probably visually started looking good, but you'd go back to the old kick test again to see if it felt the same. That same simple principle of filling the tires in your car applies to setting this cushion up. And I'll show you how simple it is. We know that Andy's legs are too high for him. I'm actually going to make him a little more dramatic so it shows up better. So Andy's legs are much too high for this cushion. If I were to, instead of kicking the tire, use my two fingers to give a good poke, and I don't mean a touch like this, you want to give a good poke. And what you want to do is poke into the cushion. So we know Andy's not making contact here, right? And if I poke my fingers in, I can collapse this. It is no difference of me pushing on this compartment versus your feet pushing on this, right? However, on the back side, if you come around here, we know where all of Andy's weight is on this cushion. If you look back here, you can almost see visually again how much pressure is in this cushion. I know when I push on this how hard it is. So if we're getting this kind of pressure reading back here and we go back to that front compartment and we push up here, there's nothing here. So just for argument's sake so you guys can see, Andy, hop up. I'm going to put the map around underneath you. Take a look at this. Sit down again, sir. We're going to put your feet back up nice and high. And you guys, we're getting a reading up here. This is the back. This is the front compartment. I'm going to push in the front here. You can see. So we know, as I stuck my hand under here from the side, that Andy didn't have any pressure here. This is not a good reading. We'd like to get a nice, solid point of contact in here, which will help reduce some of the pressures in the back. So what I would do in this situation is one of two things. I can either take air cells out of the back compartment, lower Andy's rear end down a little, take those air cells, <coughs> migrate them to the front, and pump up the front compartment, which would then, if we imagine me pumping air cells into here and increasing this compartment, you can see on the mapper that I can get a much more solid reading. Take them away, no pressure. So, why don't we take, instead of moving them, I'll put Andy's legs at the height that they should be. See the nice solid green reading that we're getting, even from front to back? That's because if you come on back over here and we look at this, Andy's actually lowered his leg for us in this situation. Um, we have a nice firm reading. Come around to back. Nice equal firm reading. And as I mentioned earlier with a car, if you have equal pressure in all four tires, it's functioning correctly. Same goes for this cushion. If you have equal pressure in all the compartments from front to back, left to right, you're going to get a good equal pressure reading. You don't need a pressure mapper to give you the um, final setup. Your fingers can help you do a lot. So that was just to show you that um, what we're showing you with the fingers correlates exactly to a good reading on a mapper. So Andy, hop on up again. I've got another one of these cushions here that I have. I'm going to put them side by side. Two of the same cushion. This is the one Andy was sitting on. You can see here that when I put my hands down, they're equal. This is one that we have taken uh, a fair amount of air cells out of the left compartment versus the right. And you can see there's probably, just by putting my hands here, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of height difference between the left side to the right side. This would, if I put this under Andy, Andy doesn't sit this way normally. Andy sits um, with very level hips. So Andy, take another seat on this again, and you guys are going to see, as Andy sits down square, he naturally, on his side over here, that we took the air cells out of, he's got a lot of pressure in that high side that we were pushing on, and there's very little pressure over here. So you could use it for offloading that side if need be, or accommodating, and if you wouldn't mind um, raising yourself up a little bit, and sit with a little bit of asymmetry, rock your hips, there you go, kind of match the cushion. All of a sudden that reading looks a lot better, doesn't it? 
So, and if you come to the front side and you really look at Andy here, you can see his hip height. Or just, even if we just look at his belt, look at the height difference from his belt from the left side to the right side. Okay, now uh, Andy, lift yourself up again and sit like you would like to sit. Sit level. Okay. The mapping is showing us over here that he's sitting hard on his, uh, your right side is it? Right side. Your right side? Okay. Now, we're going to take the pressure mapper away and I'm going to show you guys how I can set this thing up without using the pressure mapper again and just using the fingers. So, just raise yourself up enough that I can take the mapper out. Okay. And if you were sitting in this cushion, let's say that uh, a different patient used this cushion and we took it out of the, the supply closet and I, Andy's the next patient to get this cushion, we put him on it. I don't know how the last person was sitting on this and I want to know if this is set up right. I'm going to get the old poke test going here. We're going to poke on the front. That feels pretty firm. This is good. This one's good. Come around the back side. And we get down here, we poke here. Firm. Whoa. There's a big difference here, isn't there? This is that side that we took the air cells out of. We saw on the pressure mapper what the reading looks like, and that kind of matches exactly what our fingers are telling us here. So I could do one of two things. I can either get air cells, these guys, and I could start stuffing them into the empty compartment, or I could just take air cells out of the right side, the high side, the firm side, and lower him down and try and even him out to that lower side, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to actually, because Andy can, I'm going to have him stand up for a second. I'm going to take the cushion out. And you guys will see on the bottom of this cushion, on the adjuster and the vector, they both have on the tag a map of the bottom side with how many air cells are in each compartment based on the size of the cushion that you order. And every size has a different amount of air cells in it. This one um, has, what do we got here, 121 in the rear. And you're probably going, okay, how many air cells do I take out of this side to lower it down and match this side? And you would go, well, I don't know how many air cells were taken out. Should I start counting them? You don't really have to count with air because when we're talking about 120 air cells, let's say I took a handful out and I keep taking them out until they look equal and feel equal. If I'm off by five or six air cells from the left side to the right side, I'm telling you, it's such a small percentage. It's a few percentage of difference. And when you're talking about a few percentage of difference in the amount of pressure in a tire, it's not make or break. Um, the air cushions are very, very forgiving when you're pressure mapping with them. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this side, and I'm going to take enough out of here to kind of feel similar to this one. I'm open this. And I'm just going to start, you know, mashing a few out. And we should be getting close, so I'll zip it up quick, right? And I'll kind of put my hand on here. You can, you can kind of get a feel because these things lay flat. You know, they make a, I can get an idea. Oh, I think this side's still a little high yet. I'm going to take a few more out. See how that looks. All right, put our hands here, feel. Feel? I think we're pretty darn close right now. So, I'm going to put this back underneath Andy. I'm going to have him sit on this. Whoop. Good. All right. Let's go for the old poke test. Got some good contact here. Here. Let's come around the back side and see how we did. You can see that we got, we're looking pretty good here. Maybe a few more on the right side. Yes, versus the left, but let's just see. I, I, I think we could probably take maybe five or six more out of this one to make it really, really equal to the left side, but let's put the mapper back on them, see how it looks, and see how close we got. Take a seat. Not bad. The right side, I said we could take a few more out of to get closer to the left side. There's a subtle difference there. So we'll have Andy hop up one more time. I'll take that handful out. And I could tell that just by pushing on it with my fingers. I did not need the mapper to tell me that it was off by that little bit. But that's how good of a feedback you can get from just pushing on these compartments because you're just feeling the pressure that the patient is exerting onto the cushion. 
So, take it back over here. We'll unzip it. Take a few more out. That feels pretty good. Tip it up. Okay, I have a seat. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And you can see the reading that we're getting. Look at this outside edge here. We're getting a pretty constant reading here. Pretty equal right here. We can see where his ITs are. And we're getting a good solid reading up through the leg. Once again, the mapper does show us on screen to give you guys the validity to what we're saying, but it still comes back to how much pressure is being exerted from Andy's weight onto the cushion, which you can feel on the sides all the way around. Feels good. Looks good. Map's good. Job well done. Um, hop on up, Andy. <coughs> when we uh, look at the other cushion, this was the adjuster. The adjuster is really good for your um, standard asymmetries from left to right if you want to build up that anti-thrust shelf, if you want to drop the left leg or right leg for your foot propellers. That's where this thing really, really excels. I'd say mild to medium positioning. If we pick up the adjuster, or the vector, there it is, sorry. The vector's got more compartments. You're going to use this for more high-end rehab. You've got somebody with uh, pain in their tailbone. You want to offset the left or right IT, or you really want to build up maybe the front right corner of this cushion. This one's a little more precise. So, we're going to have Andy sit on this without the mapper. And we're going to see how well it's set up for him. Legs good? Good. Okay. You can see the pommels here. Now, this is the time where if we wanted to add more or take away from we can move the zippers to this front compartment right here. They're right here. If I wanted to take the pommel away for Andy, I can take some air cells out. Or if I really needed to build it up, I could do the opposite. But, now Andy, move your leg over onto that a little. Completely goes away. It's level with the front of the cushion. If you lift your leg up and out of the way so I can show here. Right there, that's good. You can see the height. So we made it level on the front of the cushion. All while the patient's sitting in the chair. If we needed to build up, uh, put your legs back again. If we needed to build up, um, he's windswept. His legs are coming over here. I can take air cells, fill this compartment up higher. It's going to get nice and firm and tall, you know, and we can start building that little wall to help keep his legs inwards. I would probably then put some more air cells back in the center and make a uh, leg separation for him. But, now, if we just want to see, without using the mapper again, just how does Andy fit on this cushion out of the box? He doesn't have any positioning needs, so this should be pretty straightforward. If I do the old poke test, feels pretty good from left to right up front. Let's feel that pressure to the back. That's nice. All the way through. I have a feeling that if we put the mapper on him, he's going to look marvelous. So, hop up. Okay, put this back down here. Take another seat, sir. I'll get those out of your way. And we're seeing some phenomenal mapping here. Look at how much pressure we're getting up into these legs. Nice and even all the way back. We're seeing a high pressure area right here which we could either do one of two things again. I could take air cells out of this center rear compartment. Remember, we have a compartment right here. Take some pressure out of there and build some up over here and kind of float that center section. You kind of see where his two ITs are. So this cushion, once again, you can get a lot done with all these different compartments on it. Um, hop on up, Andy. Um, I, I think you guys are getting the pattern with this cushion that it's very, very easy to set up. 
there's nothing to be afraid of. It's going to take a little bit more time up front because some of the other air cushions are a little faster for setup. But one of the neat things about this cushion is when you're sitting on it and he sinks into it, the amount of stability that he's going to get. Remember when I put my hand on that other cushion and I pushed down into it and I said, I'm stuck here, you can't move. I'm going to show you a really dramatic demonstration here of how stable this cushion is. Andy, sit down on that one more time, please. Um, if you lean left or right or forwards or backwards, you'll kind of see his, he can move his body, but the, his hips, if you look at the belt, look at his belt when he leans back, left and right, his hips stay pretty darn level. And that's because the air cells, when you sat on them, they sheared, they got out of the way, and he sunk into it, and now he's really contoured to the shape of this cushion. So, give me your ankles. I'm going to give you a pull. Are your brakes on? Yes. Okay. I can pull him across the floor. There's no Velcro on that cushion. And he's not coming forwards. That's the amount of stability that you can get out of this cushion. So, your constant slouchers. How hard is it to slouch? Can you slide forwards? Can you slide that way? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Funny, but very, 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 very powerful cushion. It's stable. It's light. It's incontinent. It's got sizes from 10, 10 up to 24 by 20. It's got a 550 pound weight capacity. It's got two different covers, a breathable and an incontinent cover. You can also get an additional incontinent liner with this. It's, uh, it's amazing. And I hope with what I showed you guys that I took some of the um, fears and apprehensions over trying something new because when you do get used to using this thing and setting it up with your patients, you're going to go, where has this been all my life? I love this cushion and my patients love it too. So uh, give it a shot, guys. Thanks.